These are my streets. This is my neighborhood. We're Kenzo's, baby. As I walk these streets and speak with my neighbors, I continue to hear the same old thing. Richie, I would give anything to get the old neighborhood back. But you know what happened, man. Most people, they just gave up. But not me. It's time to take a stand. Kenzo News will focus on the issues that matter most to the Kensington area. With this camera and this show, I plan to use the power of the press to let the world know Kenzo Pride is alive. Hey, what's going on, Kenzos? Welcome back to the new season of the Richie Antipoon Show. Last year was fun. We shared some laughs, but in the end, the show that wasn't going the way I wanted it to. So with that in mind, tonight we're starting a new season with four stories that are focused on bringing some positive change to our community. Like this one, for instance, I'll just tell you a short story here. One day, uh, me and John, my director, were walking down Kensington Avenue, passing out the flyers, announcing the show's new season, and we stumble upon a couple guys, you know, playing three-car money. And I say to John, wow, it's getting that fucked up now that people are, you know, allowing themselves to be victimized by playing three-car money because it's a game that you can't win at. So we walk away and, you know, like Miami Vice style, the cops fucking jump out of the car, raid the game, grab me and John, ask us what we're doing. Of course, we say, you know, we're handing out flyers for my new show, blah, blah, blah. And, then, and the guys are like, yeah, 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 they're handing out flyers. Yeah, so they let everybody go. But at any rate, I said, well, what the fuck? You just passed Kensington and Somerset with all them fucking, with all that going on down there with people handing shit back and forth, screaming, works, 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 and you stopped. A little three-car money game. This doesn't make sense. I guess there's more money in misdemeanors than felonies. I don't know. But that's why I know you're going to love the new format. We start off with my exclusive one-on-one interview with Deputy Chief David Scott discussing safety in and around SEPTA Terminal. You perceive that the environment is not safe. Then that's what people are going to walk away with. Followed by your take. The people of Philadelphia on how perception of safety works for the city. Until some bullshit happened. Tell me none of that. When, when all the BS go on, that's when everything goes. Plus, it's great to welcome back to our show, Greg Butcheroni. Greg brings compassion to the issues that matter to Kensington every day. Probably in the center system, that's probably the worst station area about the whole city. And Kenzo Cares. It's a program with local bars and restaurants offering a helping hand, not a handout. Plus Kenzo history, and also, honey, is that my car? And much, much more. So sit back, relax, dip your pretzels in the ketchup, crack a 40, roll a blunt, take it to the head, and relax and enjoy. Beaming from the Philly Can 66 satellite to the Philadelphia area, this is Kenzo News, Kensington's first and only news show, starring Kensington's own Richie Antipuna. Hi, we're here today with Pat. Pat, I want you to answer a question for me. Do you think that the city of Philadelphia has given up on Kensington? Uh, yes, I do believe so. Uh, I've been down here about six years now, and I don't see any assistance from the city or from anybody. And it's a shame because what I've found from living here is that deep down there's still a great sense of community from the people who have always lived here. And now I'm sitting here with Jerry Williams, a spokesperson for SEPTA. Do you think that SEPTA has forgotten about or walked away from the area of Kensington? Absolutely not. I mean, the Somerset Station was just renovated in 2004. Um, the problem existed there, and we decided to uh, bring uh, newness and freshness to the area by continuing to renovate the station. How are you? I'm Richie Antipuna, and I'm here today with SEPTA's Deputy Chief, David Scott. How are you today? Okay, how you doing? I want to uh, get a clean slate between you and I, because I spent enough of my life graffiti and on SEPTA trains and beating fares all my life, so. I understand. From this point on, I want to have a good relationship with Absolutely. you. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> what is the scope of your arrest authority at transit stations? SEPTA police have the powers of arrest and authority 
uh, wherever set the property is, wherever set the conveyances, buses, uh, the L, or any type of uh, vehicles that SEPTA has, wh wh wherever uh, they go is where we have our arrest powers. Can you speak to the audience about uh, crime prevention environmental design? Crime prevention through environmental design essentially means that you're designing the station in such a way in order to prevent and deter crime. But also, the way that the stations have to be designed in a geographic area, uh, it's sometimes difficult to employ some of the concepts. Typically, what a SEPTA police representative will do is meet with the um, uh, architects and the engineers that are designing the stations, um, and this would be uh, during the, the pre-construction phase of the project. Were you aware that over 2,000 riders um, exit and enter the Kensington and Somerset L stop? Uh, yes, I was aware uh, that uh, we did have a significant number of uh, passengers coming through Somerset Station, and it was called to my attention that uh, we had uh, over 2,000. Mm -hmm. Were you aware that the Philadelphia Weekly newspaper uh, dubbed Kensington and Somerset the most notorious drug corner in Philadelphia 10 years running? I was aware of a report that was published in the uh, Philadelphia Weekly that did make mention that uh, Somerset and Kensington was a very bad location as far as drugs and that it had ranked uh, fairly high up there. Yeah, number one. Number one could be can't number get one. Yes, it, 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 um, I just can't recall exactly, uh, you know, what the ranking was, but I understand that it was rated uh, uh, fairly high up there, um, not just across the city, but there was also uh, some mention of how that uh, particular area ranked on a national basis, also. This was a, around about 1984-85 when you had the office on Kensington Avenue with the models of each station, how they were going to look once the whole phase was, was completed. So obviously you went by the statistics from then as opposed to now. And of course, over the past 25 years, it has changed. So do you think by lighting up uh, Kensington and Somerset or having some type of uh, SEPTA, police, kiosks there, you know, whether it be maybe a 24-hour shift in the kiosk, do you think that that would be uh, an option? If uh, you go for uh, placing it on the sidewalk or somewhere in that area where we do tend to have a lot of uh, um, activity uh, on the stairwells and at the entrances of the station, uh, then uh, we'd have to collaborate with the Philadelphia Police Department on that issue to, just to discuss how we would man that and um, who would actually be uh, the primary in that case. Okay. And since it's generally on the street level, um, you know, we, we would uh, definitely have to get their input regarding how we would go about doing that. Okay. But it's not out of the uh, realm of possibility, uh, but it's just something that we really have to take a serious look at to see uh, what the advantages are going to be. We're really um, you know, in the business of increasing the visibility to deter the crime because uh, we can't arrest our way out of this situation. You're just um, locking up people no. um, and incarcerating people. There's a um, you know, holistic approach that we have to take. Uh, many things have to be considered, um, you know, including treatment and prevention. It costs a lot more to incarcerate uh, people uh, as opposed to uh, providing treatment and Absolutely. many national studies have, have shown that and um, it disproportionately affects the poor. We, we have to use a collaborative approach and uh, working with the community um, as well as various law enforcement agencies um, and uh, folks as yourself uh, should facilitate that. Well, thanks for your time, Deputy Chief, and uh, are we able to come back and follow up with this in a few weeks or so? Certainly, uh, we look forward to it, and um, we'll uh, look into uh, some of the um, concerns that you raised, uh, and we'll be happy to meet with you to discuss them further. 
Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. We're saying goodbye here because there was way too much information to have for one show. So tune in next week for more conversation with Chief Deputy Scott. Knowing that 95% or better of the world's heroin, and particularly Philadelphia's heroin, comes from Afghanistan, uh, can SEPTA use its money that it gets from the Homeland Security grant? And the answer to that question may surprise you. Well, Kensington isn't a forgotten neighborhood, but it might have been recognized for all the wrong reasons. So anyone in Kensington who's working hard, who's trying to put things together, who's trying to improve the situation that that neighborhood has found itself in over the last 20, 30 years, uh, has their story overshadowed by those in Kensington who are using it as an open-air drug market. My name is uh, Sherry Honkala, and I'm running for Philadelphia Sheriff. The city of Philadelphia doesn't give a damn about Kensington, and uh, for the first time we have an opportunity to make Kensington what it can be by electing me sheriff, because all of those empty properties, those are going to go to people that live in the neighborhood, and we're going to make sure that we promote long-term affordable housing for all of us that have loved the neighborhood, have been there, and care about our city. Welcome to the Pennsylvania Blottery, Kensington's weekly number of victims and forgotten Philadelphians. Our weekly results are audited by everyblock.com. Here are tonight's pickpocket three for the 2800 block of Kensington Avenue and surrounding area. Two, one, zero. And now, Felony 4, the game of reported felonies around Kensington and Somerset. Here are tonight's weekly numbers. Zero. 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 And introducing our newest game, Dope 3, where you can win an all-inclusive trip to the beautiful Viaduct Arms. It's a one-way ticket on a horse with no name. Here are tonight's big numbers. Zero. 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 Here, once again, is tonight's numbers. Our condolences to this week's victims, and remember, the lottery benefits shady Pennsylvanians. After speaking with Deputy Chief Scott, I wanted to see if perception of safety would be a strong enough deterrent for our neighborhood. So my next stop was the police trailer located at Frankfurt and Folk Rod. That's where I had the opportunity to ask that very question of Jonathan Carson, operations manager for the Frankfurt Special Services Unit. Well, it does so the sense where they know we are here, that we have a consistent presence here on Frankfurt Avenue. And not only that, but the uh, 15th District, who we, you know, have a very great working relationship with, they come out, you know, in check rooms. Right, so, well, you this know, was their, their mobile unit at and, and, you know, at the, at the beginning, yes, right. was. And you but, were here for about a year, you said? Yeah, uh, August of 2010. Oh, so you've been here for oh, over a year? Over right? a year, okay. yeah. yeah. So before that, it was the... It was actually vacant. It was vacant, and we were down at St. Mark's Church. Right. It's allowed us to be more integral into the neighborhood versus, you know, we unaccessible really at the church. However, the gentleman on the other side of the trailer had a different perception. Yeah, I'm in that shit. Man, we try to stay out their way, they stay out our way. Right. Man, that's yeah, how I be. But they never that. in that shit. They don't do a job, and they don't be around until some bullshit go on. Literally bullshit. Hey, Home Alone. Call the Cobras in there. Right. Home Alone. You don't be in there. The, 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 like working authority. People who speak this motherfucking clear. But well, they don't be in there. Until some bullshit happens. Tell me none of that. When, when all the BS go on, that's when everything goes down. Couldn't have said it better myself. This is Richie Antipuna for Kenzo News reporting. My name is Ken Milano. This is Kenzo History. the historic borders of Kensington when it uh, was consolidated into the city of Philadelphia in 1854 and uh, sat between Columbia Avenue, Delaware River, Frankfurt Avenue, Norris Street, Belgrade, York Street, down the, the old Gunner's Run. It extended uh, further south to the Cahoxin Creek, which is today's Canal Street uh, around Poplar in the Delaware. 
and it snaked up Canal Street to uh, over to Second Street to uh, Laurel Street and then up Bodine up to Cambridge and Menander down Cambridge to behind St. Peter's and eventually wound up uh, on Orkney and then up to a, a pond which sat up around 5th, 6th and Thompson. So that was your southern border. The eastern border was very easy. It was the Delaware River. Uh, the uh, northeast border was the old Gunner's Run, which was Aramingo Avenue today. That northern border snaked up a little more to York Street, uh, and then over York Street to Frankfurt Avenue, up Frankfurt Avenue to uh, about 120 feet above Lehigh Avenue, so probably just on the other side of the railroad tracks. And then it really went all the way out there to Germantown Avenue, which is around 10th and Germantown now. And in fact, behind the old uh, Edison High School, you have the reservoirs there, and that was the original Kensington Water Works. The western border was Germantown Avenue, uh, starting up around Lehigh Avenue, down Germantown Avenue to where it runs into 6th Street, and then down 6th Street to Gerard Avenue and then over Gerard, uh, just to where that creek had crossed Gerard Ave, right behind St. Peter's. Well, we just came from Frankfurt, where they got a mobile command unit sitting up there for street sweepers. I want to introduce you to a real street sweeper, Mr. Greg Butcheroni. Yeah, we're talking. What could we do if we had a use of a mobile command unit to put it down at Kensington Somerset? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a great idea. Uh, Kenton and Somerset, I've been an activist in this area for 34 years. And Kenton and Somerset's one of those places that, you know, it's the Guardian Angels got kicked out of there and got the butts kicked out of there. It's a very, probably in the central system, that's probably the worst station area throughout the whole city as regarding uh, drugs and prostitution and petty, uh, petty crimes and stuff. I mean, what we could do is you know, definitely build a better relationship with the volunteers in the community and the police members at SEPTA and the Philadelphia Police Department and staff it with volunteers to go out there to uh, help people with different issues in that area. Greg will be working with us on our ongoing investigation, the tracks. We started out in the morning, kind of like Rocky's Run, at the foot of the Silver Bridge. We're here at the we start of the viaduct at B and Indiana Avenue, where as you can see, there's it's littered with needles and bags and, and, and blood-stricken, I don't even know what that is over there, but it, I think it was funny that there is a pamphlet there that said, God's message to you. So, Greg, uh, what can you tell us about your experiences down here in and around the neighborhood? Well, Rich, you know, we come out here on a regular basis almost seven days a week, and this in particular area, Kensington, in the viaducts in the general area above the viaduct. And this is what we bump into. There's needle exchanges, obviously high drugs, high addiction rates in this area near the vicinity of Kensington and Somerset. Uh, the needle exchange program is right there, half a block away from Kensington and Somerset. And this is the aftermath, negative quality of life things that impact this community. You got kids running down here, you got runaway kids, uh, delinquent kids, and these are the dangers. Even if they don't do drugs, look at the needles down here. These are the dangers that we face, and this is the dilemma of Kensington. So in your experiences down here, you know, when you've been down here doing what you're doing all the time, down here in the viaducts, what, do you, what would you say uh, the dangers are to children or even adults? Well, the dangers, if you look on the ground level, there's exposed needles, used condoms, drugs, gang activity violent drug dealer activity, prostitution, there's a variety, anything you can imagine that would be a, a, a circumstance that would put a young child or an adult at risk is down here. You know, it's one-stop shopping down here, baby. And our thing is that these are the things we're trying to work with city officials, civic-minded officials, and business association officials in reducing and fixing a lot of these things to plague the Kensington area. Because point, uh, our point being, we just walked right on to the tracks right here where there's no fence there's no nothing we just walked right on so any child could have walked right on and walked down this path of needles this whole path is a path of needles here you want to take a walk uh, along the viaduct and see the wonderful world of kensington sure no doubt man this is everyday thing let's go do it after you my man tell me some of the stories you have uh, out here patrolling and, and uh, advocating for the uh, people out here in kensington Sure. Well, I mean, this, this viaduct right here is a classic example. Uh, you know, we got a lot of runaway kids, prostitution, uh, drug sales, drug addicts, runaway uh, 
kids coming down, kids playing hooky from school, curfew violators, anything you can imagine that and would be a problem in the city regarding crime or delinquency, you can find right down here in these tracks. And it's all in the shadows of all this with the needles and the bags and the... I mean, we just saw a drug user checking bags, empty bags, to see if there was any little bit left. Sure. I mean, this happens every day. When you come down here and you see this is every day with new faces, but the same game. As the city's changed in the late 70s going into the mid 80s, uh, crack cocaine was introduced. People moved out. Good residents from the area moved out for the most part and were replaced by residents that really just minded their own business. Even if they were law-abiding citizens, they minded their own business. A lot of them weren't civic-minded. So what happened was, next thing you know, you had the uh, where drug dealers were starting to pop up more, crack cocaine, heroin. Uh, there was a minimum resistance from the residents and to form and organizing to get these out of the community. But we touched base on what we used to do here as kids, playing, sledding, riding bikes. But do you also remember there would be at least 11 tracks across this whole open area and there was rail cars in every one. Do you remember that? Sure. I mean, a lot of times I was down there playing hockey and the cops that were there, the railroad cops, used to shoot at us and chase us. And, uh, and you know, assault pellets. <laughs> got hit in the leg with that stuff. <laughs> Doesn't stay. And what we do is there was a lot of industry, there was a lot of business going on, security was a whole lot more tighter, and uh, you didn't have all this and, and dawn of the dead back there shooting up the needles. This was a, a different spot there for a, you know an aqueduct and uh, I remember mean, we used to come down there and play hockey and, and they, the cops to, for the railroad would come down there and chase us. Absolutely. Well now it's been brought down to one track, they use it every day, they take chemicals, I believe, to a corporation at the end of the line down here. But from that point to where they come into the junction, there's no need for any of this. Well, Kensington's always been a dumping ground. I mean, you got a lot of variety of companies that are still here that are big time EPA violators. Uh, you got obviously all the blight that's going on, uh, everything that negatively impacts people's quality of life down here. I mean, it, it's, it's, Canton is one of those places, kind of like Logan and, and certain sections of North Philly, they're just a dumping ground. And people come through similarly to that at Camden. And they come through and they bring their hazardous material through here because they'll get least resistance. That's why they keep it. If it wasn't for that hazmat stuff, they, this would all be totally inoperable. But what happens is they can bring it through certain areas of Philadelphia, it goes unchallenged, and here we are with the blight. Well, Greg, that's what we hope to uh, establish between our new union here with me and you out here doing what we do. So we're going to see you in the next spot, and uh, we're going to see what goes on after this. We'll see, we'll see what the, uh, the aftermath is. Sure. Right? I got you. the city of Philadelphia forgotten about the neighborhood of Kenwood? Yes. Yes. Very simple. Look, Philadelphia is this incredible collection of neighborhoods. Every neighborhood has its a unique life to it. Um, just in essence, each neighborhood, Kensington, Fairmount, uh, Franklin, Kensington has potential. It has potential for rebuilding houses, for, for um, creating um, the housing market up here, but it also has potential for bringing industry back into the city. The city is focused heavily in other areas of the city. You have tax payments for new buildings downtown. And you have nothing that's really driving to bring industry, to bring manufacturing, to bring something up here. Do you think the city of Philadelphia gave up on Kendrick? Absolutely. When one thing happens, the next thing happens, and the cops, you, you can't go to the cops for anything. They, they either don't care or they don't want to hear it. Honey, was that our car? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Honey, Was That Our Car? The game show that rewards out-of-town visitors with fabulous prizes, which include but are not limited to Hep C, HIV, herpes, syphilis, and much, much more. Here's how the game works. Kenzo's from the hood have begun videotaping different streets around Kensington. We were so thankful to see so many tourists visiting our town, and this is our way of saying thanks. So, if you spot your car, contact us at honey at richieandtapuna.com. So hurry and email us for your fabulous prize. If you would like to play along at home, get out your cameras and post your video on our game show page at richieandtapuna.com. 
click the honey that is our car button and post video. Your video may be chosen to be on an upcoming episode. And that's it for this week's edition of Honey, Is That Our Car? Good night, everybody. Okay, we're here with the last segment of the day. It's called Kenzo Cares, where local businesses help in feeding families in the neighborhood, not handing out, but lending a helping hand. And we're here today with Mike Quinn from the Crazy Leprechaun, where he'll be doing a dish on Mondays to feed a family of four for ten dollars. You can eat it here, or you can take it home. What, what dish you preparing here? Uh, today's a classic beef stew, Rush. Classic beef stew. Ten dollars. Can't go wrong. How would you go about doing that? You start by uh, searing the, uh, getting the pot nice and hot. You start searing the beef at the uh, beginning process, and then you add your spices, a little bit of salt and pepper. Then a house blend, a special season. House blend. You let that sauté for about 10 to 15 minutes, so the beef gets a little bit brown. And then the vegetables. And then we're going to add some water. The whole process should take no longer than 45 minutes. Here you are, and get some, some broth. Is that what that is, bro? Broth. Broth, man. Remember that episode of Sanford? Uh -huh. That's some good stew. That it is. Alright, remember, Mondays, $10 feed your family. Come on down. Thanks for being the first in our Kenzo Care program. Any time to help. Glad I can help. Okay, thanks for watching. This is our first segment of Kenzo Care. It's our first step in helping out the community. Hopefully other people will get involved and uh, become involved in our movement here. So you can go to the website, richieantipuna.com slash Kenzo Cares. Thank you very much. Listen, they they giving up, Philadelphia is giving up on the people of Philadelphia. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's bad. Go ahead, both ways. Any community group uh, in the area that would like a SEPTA representative to be a part of their group as an advisory member, uh, we'd be happy to do that also. Call our customer service line, which is 215-580-7800. I'd like to thank the guy Dennis who made this lovely Kenzo shirt here for me. And if you'd like to make some more, you can send them, feel free. Marcus, stop over and pick them up for me. Thanks a lot. Go, damn! Rock on! Acknowledge my song, bring my posse along to the party, could change the zone. From the heart is in effect, so I say, buddy, study, think and learn, dig the move we made. Stunning those that just can't behave. This our plan. Here's a hand. It flew from the blue and too tough. All up in you with the formula coming from me, cause no one told ya of a logo of theory of saying, This ain't no joke, Jimmy. I ain't playing. I'm hardcore, straight up raw. I'm the overlord, I door clocking. But no, as if you didn't know, fighting on the scene when it's time to go. Asking for a number from any member of the tough crew band. Remember, jacking on my tip, over tipping my shoulder. I'll be a soldier, a team roller, smashing those who stand in my path. Counting them down like math, planning, mapping. Wrapping them down for my part of town. Oh, damn girl. Another verse of rap, another tune, a bar of star. Still the package 